welcome back to Entertainment Circle. I'm Sheila Paz, and I came a little early before uh, I introduced my our next artist that I'm going to have uh, on the show today because I wanted to talk to you guys about what is going on at CRS. What is CRS? Country Radio Seminar is an, an event that is uh, annually put together for country artists around the world to come and learn about the industry. And they also get the opportunity to get interviewed by TV hosts or radio hosts, uh, like people like me, so they can promote their music. So today agenda is interesting because I just took a little time uh, during the lunch break to listen in and they were talking about the TikTok phenomenon. Uh, TikTok has taken off and especially has a big influence on, on music and country artists especially because uh, grand, one great example, one of the speakers at the TikTok talk, that's so funny, TikTok talk, <laughs> uh, was about uh, Andrew uh, Hanakos. He was in The Voice, uh, he was in The Blinds, and then he was going to release a, a song. He was talking about that, that his producer sent him a mix of the song and that he decided to do a TikTok while he was cooking and listening to the song. And he posted it on TikTok and the song went pretty much viral. He got over 1 million views in TikTok and people wanted to know where he could get this song. And he said that he uh, told them that it was going to be released in five weeks. Well, in the meantime, people went back and listened to his prior uh, album that he has released like six months earlier, and it went number one, uh, one of his songs. So now he's like TikTok famous. Uh, his careers have been gone crazy because of TikTok. So if he did that, why can't you do it too? Uh, it can happen to all of us, to any of us. Uh, it's a platform that is there, is free, and you can make your 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 dream come true, basically, if you put your mind to it. So this is one of the reasons why um, CRS exists. So you can hear uh, stories about other artists, how they made it in the business. So you should, if you are not uh, here taking this seminar virtually this year, Every year is in person in downtown Nashville, but this year is virtually. So you may have the opportunity still to attend. I'm not sure if the registrations are still open, but it's three days, it's four days. Uh, it ends on Friday. So another one, uh, the things that they were talking about uh, is data. Artists sometimes don't understand data and data is important to know when you're trying to do a career, how many fans do you have? How many views do you have? How can I monetize my, my music? How can I monetize my TV show? Like me right now, I'm trying to monetize my show. <laughs> but all this, all this is important. And those are things that you need to know. You need to know the business of music so you can be successful. And uh, they have a fire chat uh, YouTube later on today. The agenda is jam-packed with a lot of lectures and workshops pretty much that you can learn about the business. And in the meantime, we have a lot of media available that can chat with you about your music. Um, also, I was so happy to see this part. Uh, they were they had the CRS honors and today they honor Sarah Traherne for her work raising money to uh, help the artists in the industry during the pandemic. And um, they were supposed to honor Rascal Flats last year, but uh, because of the pandemic, it was impossible. So today they received their their honor um, uh, lifetime award, uh, achievement award. Uh, it was really cool. Uh, even though they are not in person, but they were able to come on camera and speak and all those things. And there is networking opportunity. So if you are an artist and you're attending, go to attend and network with other artists or whoever is attending so you can uh, give each other feedback and, and move forward. So that's just a snippet of what is CRS and what's going on there. But now let's get back to this show and uh, let's talk to uh, my artist that has been patiently waiting <laughs> in the back in the back here uh, for me to introduce him. 
uh, he is a singer songwriter um, that was that lives oh must be called up there I feel for you <laughs> he's laughing uh, he was born in on Oneonta New York and uh, uh, he's he has um, influences from Con Conway Tweedy, Merle Howard, George Jones, Johnny Cash, and uh, he started playing music at a very young age. And his name is Ken Wilbur. Welcome. Hola. How are we doing? <laughs> Great. How are you? Hola again. <laughs> <laughs> Hello again. <laughs> yeah, we shot earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I know we have a different time zone. I hope that you, uh, I'm glad that you were still able to make it. Well, thank you for having me. You're very welcome. What is, how's going on you over there? Well, you know, we're getting some crummy weather, uh, not nearly as bad as the South seems to have been peppered with the last couple of days. Uh, you know, we, yeah. it's, it's raining out and we got some freezing rain going, but not much along the snow yet. We're going to be getting that later in the next couple of days, but it's, it's kind of sleepy out here right now. Yeah, it's, it's been uh, really cold in Nashville. It even feels cold in the house, even though that uh, we got the uh, heater going on, but I still I still feel cold. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing how, you know, with the weather and everything, we, when you get acclimated to a certain temperature and it changes, how that can affect you. I mean, me being, in, you know, from the Northeast, even myself, when I've gone down to Nashville in the past in the winter and we've had some nice warm weather and it's been, you know, 70, 75, and then all of a sudden it'll dip down to 30. I'm freezing, which, you know, it's like 25, 30 degrees colder at home during that time. But because I've gotten accustomed to the, the different weather, it, it, it affects me too even. So it's, it's weird. How That's that interesting. Um, well, I'm from way south, from Cuba. <laughs> so I... Uh... <laughs> well, you I'm really always, don't like the cold. <laughs> I really don't like the cold, so I always feel like I'm freezing. So uh, when did you start music, and when did you know that music was what you wanted to do? Well, you know, I, I think I've always known from from as early as I can remember that, that music was something that I wanted to do for a living. I, I had no idea how to go about it, but I responded to music at a very young age, and uh, I've told this story a hundred times when, when I was little, uh, probably about five or six years old, uh, it, my birthday was coming up and my grandparents didn't have a lot of money and they ended up giving me a stack of my grandmother's old, uh, vinyl record albums. Oh. And, and that was, that was my gift from them. And it ended up being one of the greatest gifts that anybody could have ever given me because it just opened up, you know, my appreciation for music and it, it taught me to really, uh, listen to, you know, I was listening to artists like Merle Haggard and Conway Twitty and George Jones and Johnny Cash and, you know, just a lot of the, the 60s, 70s and 80s uh, country music artists. And, you know, I used to just stand around the turntable trying to emulate them and sound just like them. Uh, so it really developed a lifelong love for not only performing music, but uh, also for, for record collecting. I, uh, <laughs> I kept that. Wow. And, uh, you know, I mean, now, uh, much to the chagrin of my wife, my my record collection is probably up over 45,000 pieces. I, I was just going to ask you, do you still have the record player? Oh, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Wow. Fact, it's right here next to me. It's, it's what, never, is, never what is in your record collection that might surprise uh, somebody? Well, I mean, I love music. I love all music. Um, obviously, country music, but I love uh, blues and jazz and old school R and B. And I mean, there's even uh, a decent amount of, of classical music in there. So, I, I like a little wow, bit of classical. Everything. Yeah, and uh, I, I come from a theater background as well. Um, that was kind of where I got my start into performing. So, you mm -hmm. know, there's there's some show tunes and stuff in there too. Oh wow! Well, you should do some of those right now. <laughs> <laughs> Shotus, okay, wow. Yeah, so, you, got, you got to like a little of everything. Yes, yes, of course, of course. I love classical music too. Uh, and I love jazz and, you know, sometimes I just like to play it and listen and just relax. Uh, so what did you do during 2020? Well, uh, you know, 2020 is uh, has been kind of a kind of a busy year for me, uh, despite um, the pandemic and everything slowing stuff down. Um, I haven't really been doing a lot of live dates or anything like that, but we we managed to squeeze a few in, um, some acoustic stuff and smaller 
venues and whatnot. Um, but I've been down to Nashville. I got to do a, uh, a television show a few months ago uh, called uh, the Jimmy Bone and Friends Show, which was a real blast. And uh, that has uh, been airing all over the place. It's been picked up by a lot of different networks and uh, reruns are still airing. So that was a really cool experience. And uh, been down in, in Nashville uh, finishing up uh, what's going to be my second album should be coming out later this year. Uh, it'll be called ran out of sky and uh, we're pretty excited about it. it should be. You ran uh, out of the sky. Ran out of sky. Yep. No, 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 no. How can you run out of the sky? Hey, you know, I mean, <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's not my line, but I, I, I wish I could take credit for it. Cause I kind of like it. Um, uh, the song was, uh, was written by my producer, Sonny Lemaire. And uh It's, it's about a relationship breakup and, uh, you know, the, the tagline is, you know, we, we just ran out of sky. So there's not like hard feelings in the, in the relationship. It just, you know, it, it just kind of dissolved and it, it was something that you couldn't have imagined would have happened, but then it did. So, uh, I, I thought it was a cool image and, uh, and that, that's going to be the title of the upcoming record, which will be late out so, later. Later. So why did that song resonate with you that you selected as the name of the arm of uh, the record? Well, um, I, I thought the song was was really cool. And one of the things that I like about uh, Sonny's writing, um, he tends to be very visual, you know, so you you feel like when you listen to his songs, you almost feel like you can smell things, uh, you can taste things, you can see them. It's it's very it's very visceral in that sense. And uh, this song. Um, definitely hit that that note like from the first line uh in my rearview mirror i see a sweet savannah night fourth of july and it just like instantly you're like boom i'm there I see you're that. right there you're visualizing you're like transporting yourself mentally yes all right all right i feel you <laughs> <laughs> i can't wait to hear them um but uh, i actually was going to ask you about this song wait sorry i didn't I was just going to ask you about this song. <laughs> yes. Uh, you've gone to my head. This is actually. I have not. <laughs> <laughs> this cool. is actually the first song that, uh, that I cut down in Nashville with uh, uh, producer Sonny LaMare from Exile and uh, co-producer and engineer Tony Cottrell for uh, mm. Lonely Dog Productions. And uh, I'm awful proud of this one. Uh, instantly, the first time I heard this song, it, it, it grabbed me. It kind of reminded me uh, of how I felt when uh, my wife and I first started dating, you know, and you'd be coming home from, uh, from one of your dates, and you were just like, wow. And, and it just kind of gives you that, it, it describes that feeling of euphoria that you, you feel when you're first uh, falling in love. So this song's very special to me, and uh, I'm very happy with, with the way it turned out, and I, I hope folks like it as well. Well, let's listen in. Maybe I shouldn't be driving Got a little buzz going Feel a little high The kind of shape that I'm in I find it hard to focus It's like the stars in my eye Gotta roll down the window So I can breathe Don't know the effect you have on me Oh, you've gone to my head I'm dreaming out loud All the tender words you said Got me crazy shouldn't be calling Drove all the way home thinking about the sound of your voice It's a funny feeling falling Whoa, don't want to stop it As if I had a choice Maybe I should shut up before I say it too much But the room is spinning and I still feel your touch Oh, you've gone to my head I'm dreaming out loud All the tender words you say Got me crazy 
Wow, that is so sweet. It got me here, like moving and dancing, like I was with you there, and that feel with the green, and that's what I want to eat right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Like you you're welcome. You had a very smooth voice. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. You're welcome. It's, it's really beautiful. I love the song. And actually, I was going to ask you about your website. Um, yes. Uh, because I didn't have, I, I went to look it up and it wouldn't come up. So what is your website? Uh, it's KenWilberCountry.com. Okay. Let's see if I can spell it correctly. Yeah, KenWilberCountry.com. Like that? Just like that. All right. So guys, if you want to check out Ken's music, uh, go to his website, KenWilbertCountry.com. And of course, you are on all over social media, uh, Facebook, yes. Instagram. Are you doing TikTok yet? You know, I haven't got into the whole TikTok thing yet, you know. <laughs> did you I, hear my speech at the beginning? I did. It makes me, it makes me want to get into it. But I, I'm, I'm one of them old guys, and I'm a little slow on the whole technology thing. So uh, I, I, I'm learning what the hip kids are doing. So <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's that. incredible. I actually posted a video of uh, me, um, like a behind the scene of me filming something, and it had like 500 views. And I was like, oh. I guess people like that. <laughs> oh yeah, people love behind the scenes stuff. Yeah, so I did it, I started like a couple months ago and only have like a few clips in there. So I need to follow, uh, what is his name? Uh, let's see. Andrew Janakos. Andrew Janakos, uh, see what he's doing so I can follow his lead. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have to do the same. <laughs> yeah, you have to get into it, I mean, every. Every time that is something new, like a couple of years ago, it was like a Snapchat. Now nobody talk about a Snapchat, now it's TikTok. What will be next? You never know. I mean, it just keeps evolving. You you almost need a a, a team of teenagers to keep you posted on uh, on all oh, the new goodies the, that are coming yeah, out. Exactly, exactly. So um, it says here that you self-produced your first album, Rolling My Own. Yes. What is it like to be your own producer? Well, I mean, in, in this particular instance, uh, you know, I was my own producer because, you know, I said to myself, you know, darn it, I got all this original material and I, I'd been co-writing with uh, my former lead guitar player from uh, my old band that I was in. And uh, so Carrie Fallot, the guitar player and myself, you know, we, we wrote uh, or co-wrote uh, all the tracks on the on the album. I also wrote some with uh, my good buddy Cameron Kinnear. Um, we were like, Hey, you know, we got some songs that we think here are pretty good. So we, we want to, we want to make an album. And, uh, we didn't really know what we were doing. We recorded demos and stuff when we were doing the jukebox band thing, uh, playing clubs and stuff, but it was just an entirely different process. So, you know, we went into this, into the studio here in upstate New York and, uh, and we, we cut the, uh, the first album roll on my own using, uh, all local musicians and stuff that I had hired on for the process. And, uh, we did this in my buddy, Mike brother's studio in, uh, in green New York. And, uh, it was a very interesting process. There was a lot of, there was a lot of, uh, trial and error involved. And, uh, you know, I had certainly made some mistakes early on in the process. Um, before I moved to my buddy Mike's studio. And uh, fortunately he had a little bit more engineering experience. He had uh, graduated from uh, the recording workshop uh, mm -hmm. in which uh, Tony Cottrell was his teacher. And, and he sent the material when we finished off to Nashville. And uh, that was actually what got me working with uh, Sonny LaMare from Exile and, and Tony Cottrell is that uh, Tony uh, was, you know, my buddy Mike's instructor and uh, you know, he mastered the process or the project for us. <laughs> hey, we all have a learning curve, right? Absolutely. You know, I mean, it, it's one thing to get up there in front of a live audience and perform, but it's a whole nother deal. It's a whole new, new different thing. And I'm glad that you had that experience and that way, you know, the behind and the front, you know, know everything. And that's how you master your domain. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and for now, you know, I, I really enjoy working with a producer rather than doing it myself. I mean, somewhere yeah. down the road, I, I, I may look to produce another album, but right now I'm so happy working with uh, Sonny LaMare and Tony, and he's such an amazing producer and mentor, and they, they really get good performances out of me, and they, you know, they, they know when to push me and, and, and when to coddle me, and, you know, it, it helps to have that extra set of ears going, hey, 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 you can do better than that. <laughs> wow, that was awesome, you know, it just, it, whatever it needs. So, um, I know where that laid back 
uh, feel of you come from. You work as a, a, <laughs> a Delaware country sheriff office as a correction <laughs> officer, and I can't even say all that, and mounted patrol. My goodness, you have to have a lot of um, uh, patience <laughs> yeah. to do that. Yeah, patience. Uh, patience definitely uh, comes into play uh, working in corrections. Uh, Ninety percent of that uh, field is is definitely interpersonal skills and being able to effectively communicate with people. Um, if, if you treat people like human beings and you effectively communicate your expectations and you're you're able to listen to them and you know try to coach them through whatever it is that they're going through or whatever you need them to do. Um, you know, usually you can, you can do all right, but you know, there, there is that small percentage of the time where things just don't go as planned and, you know, <laughs> it can get I crazy. Bet. So you're still doing that? Yes. Yes, I am. Uh, still working for the, uh, the Delaware County Sheriff's office. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So how do you fit that into your schedule with the music? Well, to be honest, um, <laughs> one of the, one of the main perks of, about, working in, uh, in corrections for the sheriff's office is, uh, we have state mandated staffing levels, which require, um, us to work overtime that may not be planned if, you know, something pops up or whatever. So we're, we're actually allowed to bank our time as, as time off. So whenever I, uh, need to do something for my music career, or I need to go off to Nashville for a few weeks or wherever I need to go. I just, you know, let them know. And, you know, they, they're like, all right, buddy, have fun. We'll see you when you get back. Wow, that is interesting. I I, I never had a, an artist on the show that have that does that kind of work. Uh, but kudos to you. That's, okay. I was like, he has this laid back kind of demeanor to him. Well, I wonder why. And then I read that, and I was like, oh, of course. A lot of life experience that throw you off at any moment, so you have to stay cool. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Because people feed off of your energy with you if you radiate positive energy people people feed off that and the same thing goes if you if you radiate negative energy they will definitely grab right onto that and you can you can suck the energy out of a room rather quickly that is so true that is so true are you holding a guitar pick on your hand i am i saw that you were going to perform for us but i played a video for you but if you're welcome to play Oh, we can do it either way, man. I'm I'm wide open. Whatever. Okay, whatever come you want. on, let's do it. So you can sing us off. All right. Well, I'll do a little bit of uh, my current single, "Freedom Song," and uh, you have to bear with me. I'm not the world's greatest guitar player. I do all right, but uh, <laughs> the guy who played on the record is a little bit better than me. But we're gonna give it a go anyway. So. All right, and sure you do well. Take it away. Here's "Freedom Song." staring back at me ain't the man I used to see I've been walking the line a long time and need a change breaking my back working double shifts the of the world's getting hard to lift I'm starting to think I need to break a link in this chain something's got to give this ain't the way to live. Put me on a highway, the interstate, a dirt road, to any place. As long as I'm along gone, chasing down some blue skies in my old truck. To the world I'll turn the radio up and sing along to this freedom song. Got a good woman and she understands Every now and then Her old man needs some downtime To clear his mind and unplug This time tomorrow you will see my face There'll be one less rat running in this race I'll be soothing my soul with a fishing pole That's what I love So put me on a highway The interstate to any place as long as I'm along gone chasing down some blue skies in my old truck to the world I'll turn the radio up and sing along to this freedom song 
Put me on a highway, the interstate, the dirt and road, the any place. As long as I'm along gone, chasing down some blue skies in my old truck. To the world, I'll turn the radio up and sing along. Sing along. Sing along to this freedom song. Sing along, okay, to this freedom song. Okay, I did. <laughs> thank you so much. Well, uh, you. I appreciate you uh, singing for us and uh, uh, and coming and giving us a little bit of your time. Um, I don't know what was your plans today, but I hope that uh, you will have something great going on uh, on your end and that you stay safe and healthy with your wife. And, uh, and how do I get to meet you when you come to Nashville? Well, I hope so too. And uh, thank you for having me. It was, it's been an absolute pleasure. You're very welcome. I'm going to put your website up again. Uh, so if you're a fan uh, of Ken Wilbur Music, go follow him up on his website and on social media and uh, support his music. Thank you so much for your time. And uh, I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye. Take care. All right, everybody. Uh, I have... Uh, six minutes before my next interview so i i stay tuned and we'll come back with a wonderful duet so stay tuned bye <laughs>